Some weapons in Warframe have all sorts of fancy gimmicks. Laser beams, explosions, fancy projectiles. But there's a certain elegance to be found in the simplicity of something like the Breton Prime. Hey guys, welcome back as always, my name is Lazar and today we're going to be diving deeper into this primary weapon. As per the usual, I got a couple of builds lined up. Something cheap, something affordable, but of course we also have the quote-unquote endgame set up with a crazy ribbon. That said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually take a new player friendly approach. I like to take my time and explain a lot of the aspects that veteran players should already be accustomed to. So in case you're a veteran, and you already know most of the stuff, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Bratton Prime. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of free shots. The Breton Prime is what you call a standard assault rifle. No frills, no bells, no whistles, nothing special whatsoever. And that can definitely be a good thing. Let's say you're coming off of a more standard FPS and want to ease your way into Warframe. In that case, then look no further than the Breton Prime. Again, this is your standard assault rifle affair. Now, at times, the weapon may not appear to be hit scan simply because you can see the bullet travel time and all whatnot, but rest assured, this is a hit scan weapon. The recoil is solid. This is the 15 meter test. Let me show you. So, 15 meters to the target, like so. Most of the bullets will be landing completely in the crossers, even though that the weapon does tend to jiggle a little bit. Another feature of this weapon is the fact that it's got a pretty sizable magazine at 75 and the fire rate is pretty solid. But when we have this size of a magazine, we want to play around with fire rate just to increase that DPS even further. And speaking about the DPS, let's have a closer look at what we're dealing with. Mod capacity 60 out of 60. As soon as you finish building your Breton Prime, it's going to be 30 out of 30. Jump into actions and install your Oro King Catalyst, which will be doubling your mod capacity. Unfortunately, in Warframe, this is a necessary step if you want to max out any weapon. You can farm it from Nightwave, you can get a blueprint from the Daily Sortie, or you can pay 20 plat to have one installed. Sometimes, these Orokin Catalysts do appear on alerts and invasions after dev streams, and some events also have them as a reward. My weapon has been formatted a total of 6 times, but for the weapon build, I'm recommending you guys, you're not gonna need more than 2 free forma. I recommend you simply slap on V symbols, 2 V symbols and a dash or 3 V symbols depending on the option slot you're gonna be going for. More on that just a tad later. Accuracy on the weapon is going to be 28.6. Now, there's a very popular mod in Warframe called Heavy Caliber. It's very popular on certain weapons. Now, this one, unfortunately, reduces your accuracy. But in order to properly gauge exactly what this mod does to your accuracy, you got to go with some multi-shot on a weapon and repeat the accuracy test. Allow me to show you with some multi-shots with Chamber Vigilante Armaments. Because, essentially, not the primary bullet suffers. The multi-shot bullets kind of suffer. 50 meters once again, please. Please, what the... Hey, there we go. That's, that's gonna be good enough. As you can see, some bullets will be landing completely outside the crossers. So, essentially, if you want to go with heavy caliber, I would suggest you only use this weapon 10 meters or less. From my humble point of view, you don't need to go with Heavy Caliber, there are plenty of other better mods that we can choose from. Again, there's plenty of options when it comes to the Bratton Prime. Let's talk about critical chance and critical damage on this weapon. Now, some will disagree, but critical chance is still worth it on the Breton Prime, even though the base is a bit low. Why? Because of Hunter Munitions, and how powerful Hunter Munitions currently is in Warframe. With Point Strike and a massive 150% extra, we're gonna go with 30%. And believe it or not, yeah, that makes it viable for Hunter Boom. So, there you go. The critical multiplier on the weapon is solid at 2.0x. This is basically the most common critical multiplier in Warframe. It's not too hot, it's not too weak, it's spot on. Fire rate of almost 10, a magazine of 75, a multi-shot of 1, 1 bullet by default, noise alarming, and a reload of 2.2 seconds. Just a smidge on the lengthy side. Riven Disposition, 4 out of 5. Now, if you're still unfamiliar with Riven's link the cards right now for a full and detailed tutorial. There's too much to say in just this review. But the point is, with 4 out of 5, Riven's will be definitely worth picking up. Of course, if they not, don't cost too much, but again, price and stuff like this is a bit subjective. It's up to you to decide what is worth it and what is not. My own two cents on it, I never paid more than 350 plat for a Riven. So, there you go. Status chance of 26%, which is super solid. And when it comes to the damage on this weapon, take a look. You got the full array of IPS, impact puncture slash, and the highest amount by a landslide is gonna be slash. So, of course, we're gonna mix this one in with a little bit of vital damage. The total damage 45, of course, this is the damage of a single bullet, and all of these do add up. And now, let's have a look at the standard build. 
And we got a whole lot of damage with Serration, Multi-Shot with Split Chamber, Critical Chance, Critical Damage combo between Point Strike, Vital Sense, and of course, Hunter Mumu needs to be here as well. That 30% chance to apply a Slash on Critical Hit. Currently in Warframe, the most powerful elemental combo that you can get is Varl. It's simply the strongest that you can get, especially on a Slash build through Hunter Munitions. Not only that, but... Also, Varl is the most applicable regardless of the situation. It will do very well versus Infested, versus Corrupted, versus Grenier, versus Corpus, basically versus everybody. So bear that one in mind. Now, we also got Stabilizer in the weapon Plexilus slot or Exilus mod slot or whatever the hell they called this one. This is an optional mod. By all means, if you're newer to Warframe, if you don't have a whole lot of resources and you're not necessarily trying to max everything out just yet, you can skip this uh, mod slot altogether because it costs 20 plat or you gotta find the damn, uh, farm the materials and then craft the adapter. So there you go. Minus 60% weapon recall, you, you, you will feel it in gameplay. Basically, this one becomes sort of a baza when you start to play with it. So if you enjoy the baza, you're gonna love stabilizer on this one. Other options for that particular Excel slot, uh, you can go with Vigilante Supplies if you're gonna go with a lot of fire rate on the weapon, but normally you shouldn't really need it because you got something like 550 bullets as a reserve. Again, this one is optional. Now, when it comes to the last mod slot, this is your option slot. Plug into this one whatever the hell you feel comfortable with, okay? Don't let anybody tell you that weapons need to be modded in just a single way. This is just a suggestion. Play off this, okay? Use this one as a base and just simply play around with it, make modifications to suit your own gameplay style. But of course, there are some options which are very powerful. For example, Heavy Caliber. Always a good idea on a weapon that you don't mind losing some accuracy on. We can go to more critical chance, which will also mean more slashes from Hunter Munitions. To that end, you can go to Argon scope. The problem with Argon scope is not readily available. Only from the Acolyte event which rolls around once every... my bad? Twice a year? I think twice a year. Something like that. So if you don't have Argon scope you can go for more multi-shot. Always a good idea, right? 60% multi-shot plus the chance to enhance critical hits for primary weapons. Don't misunderstand that 5% chance you're gonna be getting from this one is... It's nice to have. No, it's not 20%. It's 20% if you have the four mods with the Sentinel and all whatnot. It's only 5% per mod. And again, it's nice to have, but it's not really all that important. Hammer shot. Hmm, hammer shot good in this case. Well, with a 30% critical chance, all that critical damage goes to waste. But still, you get 80% status chance. I would not go with hammer shot on this one. Instead, why don't you try this? Again, let's leverage that high ammunition that we got. Let's go with fire rate. You can go with Prime Shred. If you are in a position to actually use Prime Shred, if you have Prime Shred, then by all means go with Prime Shred. 55% fire rate, 2.2 meters worth of punch through. Punch through basically is a form of AoE. The normal version is also decent, but only 30% with 1.2. My recommendation, again, is fire rate, but even more fire rate than that. More than speed trigger, go with Vile Acceleration. Listen, just go with it for the kicks and lols. 90% fire rate at the cost of 15% damage. My friends, that 15% is simply 15% away from your serration. Okay, big wolf. Go with this one, try it out. If you don't like it, switch it out with whatever the hell makes you happy. Now let's test out the weapon like so. We're gonna be spawning in Corrupted Heavy Goons level 120. The usual benchmark. Now, normally, the way you test a slash build is hit a enemy till about 50%, then watch the slashes deal the damage. Let's see if that happens or not. Take a look. I got 10 vital procs, 17 slashes, and 4 impacts on the targets. Now, it's very true that the values of my slashes aren't super high, but they're high enough. The value of the bleeds will depend on how many vital procs you had on your, on your target when you procced that slash. You get it? This is one of the reasons that vital right now is like the meta. Before Viral, Corrosive was the meta, but uh, it wasn't as as big of a king as Viral is right now. Before, well, basically you had Corrosive and on certain situations, Viral Slash was still better than Corrosive. Now it's basically Viral on everything, so there you go. Perhaps the E will wake up one day and change it. But anyway, take a look at the performance of the weapon. My friends, this is a pretty decently placed MR weapon and for my first assault rifle, my first prime assault rifle in Warframe, I think it packs one hell of a punch and I do recommend the weapon, especially if you're looking for something just a tad more simple. Again, no laser beams, no fancy explosions, no, well, basically dropping your frame rate to the Brahma and so on and so forth. If you use the Brahma, you know exactly what I mean. 
But of course, my friends, we can do even better than that. What about Prime Mods? What kind of Prime Mods do we have when it comes to primary weapons? Well, you got Prime Cryo Rounds. In this case, not ideal. You really gotta go with those 60-60 mods from my humble point of view. Prime Shred, again, in the Weapon Excellus mod slot. We don't have anything like Prime Serration or Prime Point Strike because D stubbornly refuses to give us one because the weapons would be too powerful in the PV e-game. <laughs> yeah, I know. Thankful Sulu? Well, you can try to go with this one, but honestly, from any standpoint, it's simply not all that powerful. Again, just play around with this mod and see what you like. Let's talk about ribbons, right? Four out of five, we're gonna be having some really interesting ribbons for this one. This one is a loaner from a friend. No, it's not my property, okay? So you don't need to hate on me, but check this on out. Critical chance, critical damage, multi-shot minus impact. <laughs> It's beautiful, isn't it? Rivens like this kind of tend to make you cry, or at least they make me cry. Anyway, I removed all the impact of the weapon. There wasn't a lot of impact on it. Okay, just a smidge of impact, but a smidge of impact is enough to get you to hate a weapon. So there you go, no more impact. Now, there are certain things in Warframe which a lot of players call harmless negative. This is not a harmless negative. This is a positive negative. And yes, I'm fully aware what a positive negative is, but in this case, it does apply. This is a positive, a beneficial negative, if you will. And the rest is just fantastic. Of course, the same build as before, and the Riven took the spot of the option slot. Now, let's see, my friends. I don't have fire rate anymore, right? Right. Oh, by the way, did I tell you guys, if you run out of ammo because you plugged in too much fire rate like I do, just drop a damn pad, okay? Look, ammo restore. Oh, how horrible. Or even another option that you can go for is... Yeah, let's talk about Sentinels. We can go with Carrier or Carrier Prime. It doesn't matter which one of the two you have because you have this fantastic little mod right here. It's called Ammo Case, and this will solve your ammo issues. Oh, by the way... Use any weapon on your little sentinel of sorts and make sure to plug in all the vigilante mods. You're still going to be getting that 20% chance to enhance critical hits even if your little sentinel dies and never comes back to life. And we're going to be using this one just a tad later when it comes to Warframe buffs. But for now, just the Riven. Riven mods for the Bratton Prime, super cheap. Well, for the Bratton Prime, for the Bratton period. Super cheap, my friends. I think you can get an unrolled one for 20 to 30, plat, something like that. But of course, obtaining a god roll. I think that's what Riven traders refer to these things. God roll or uh, super sand roll or something like that. I'm not familiar with the lingo. Will cost you a whole lot. Take a look. Oh my god. Just a couple of shots. Never mind 50%. I don't need to hit 50%. I need 80% on the target. That's it. Then I'll let the slashes deal the damage. Take a look at that. What, you didn't think it was gonna die, did you? Yes, I did the map. <laughs> this is a fantastic weapon, honestly. If you are not interested in anything too fancy, too spacey futuristic, this is not my style of weapon. No, definitely not. I'm more of an Arca Plasma kind of guy. More of a Brahma kind of guy. Again, laser beams, explosions, fancy projectiles, and spacey futuristic weapons. But I do ex appreciate a weapon such as this and its simplicity and its heritage. So that's what a incredible Riven can do. Just a couple of shots and the target falls to the floor in just a couple of seconds. Now, of course, my friends, <laughs> we can do a whole lot better than that. Definitely with Lady Mirage Prime, the best weapon buffer in Warframe. Now let's have a look at them buffs since we're talking about the buffs. Corrosive projection against Grenier is the best aura you can have. Minus 80% armor. And I think that you gotten tired of how many people keep <laughs> slapping you over the head with corrosive projection. My friends, it's not... That important, honestly. If your build perhaps needs, uh, I don't know, rifle amp, energy siphon, or power donation, or growing power, or whatever else you feel like it, just go for it. But yes, against heavily armored target, of course, something like this will be quote unquote, quote unquote, ideal. When it comes to arcanes, arcane precision will not do. Instead of it, we're gonna go with rage. It's basically precision, but for primary weapons with slightly different numbers. 180% damage to primary weapons for 24 seconds, and on headshot, 15% chance and you can go with arcane avenger as your second arcane unless you're using harrow if you're going with harrow i would drop avenger for more primary weapon damage or perhaps you can use your barrier energize whatever else you prefer now on this one 40 percent critical chance boost bonus additive after it simply stacks on top of what we already have and it applies to your primary weapon to your secondary weapon to your melee it's the most powerful offensive arcane in warframe from my point of view and with that we're almost going to 100 percent crit chance so basically almost guaranteed now let's see what we can do of course with this amount of power we should really bump up the levels but here's the thing my friends ever since the whole status chance changes and the scaling changes that came with it it doesn't matter all that much 
again, you're gonna see that level 150 Corrupted Heavy Goons are not that much more, uh, how do you say, resilient than the level 120. We're gonna unpause the AI so they can hit me and I can get my Arcane Avenger proc. We're gonna be using Mirage's free ability for a fantastic damage increase. Oh, by the way, did I tell you guys I aura format Mirage like I promised. See, 718% damage now. So I told you it will happen 2020. I was not lying. One shot. That was a single bullet. Look, two slashes. Will it be a kill? Will it be a kill? Of course it's a kill. A single, solitary bullet out of the Bratton Prime. I got 74 out of 75. Now, of course, we're not gonna do anything of the sort. We're just gonna do this. What's the point of playing an assault rifle if you, can ab if you can't absolutely murder everything that stands in front of you? It's supposed to be an assault rifle, isn't it? But I'm sure somebody will disagree with me saying it's a submachine gun or whatever. I don't know what it is. I know that I can keep my trigger finger pressed down and everything dies before me. And that's good enough for me. As for a conclusion to the Bratton Prime, it may be a very simple weapon, but again, I think there's beauty in simplicity and I 100% recommend this outstanding weapon. It still packs a punch and believe it or not, the whole status changes were actually beneficial to the Bratton Prime. As always, my name is Blazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. If you got any sorts of feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. Also, in the comment section down below, if you guys want to suggest any particular type of content. Now, in all honesty, I can't exactly promise you or guarantee that it'll be done by next time, but I can promise you that I will be reading through each and every comment. And if you love the content, consider supporting us via Patreon. Until next time, my friends. Bye bye.